Hey everybody, before I get started, I just wanted to mention a couple of ways that you can engage with me on a more personal level. I have a few avenues set up and I keep focusing on one and I figured, why don't I make a short little video talking about all of them real quick before we get into these uh, episodes. So first thing, Patreon. There's a link in the episode description and every episode description to the Patreon, as well as uh, a video on the feed called Major Announcement that has all the details of what each tier offers and how much they cost. I implore you to check that out. I offer a lot of cool shit for my patrons. Uh, second thing, the Discord channel. There's also a Discord link in the episode description and in every episode description. I have multiple channels set up there for each show that I'm covering, and it's a great way to just engage with me. I have a channel set up for... Uh, uh, MMA talk as well. I'm a big MMA fan. So if you're an MMA fan, you can check that out as well. There's a link to the discord in the episode description. And then lastly, oh, the Facebook and Twitter, social media, follow me on there. I post news on there. When I say news, I mean like, hey, I'm stopping covering this show. Hey, I'm starting covering this show. Let me know what you think about this. I do uh, live watches of things on Facebook where like I'll check in and say, I'm watching so-and-so show. And then I'll like live comment while I'm watching it. And that'll be cool if maybe you watch that show too and you want to watch along with me or you're watching it later and you'll see my thoughts, which are usually pretty entertaining because I'm usually pretty high when I'm writing them. So uh, check out all those links in each episode description and let's talk about this episode. Peace. One mic, one mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. One mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic, and today I'm here to talk about Season 5, Episode 8 of FX's Fargo, entitled Blanket. Uh, getting straight to the point, uh, this episode is pretty consistent with pretty much all of the previous ones. Uh, <laughs> Juno Temple and John Hamm continue to impress, uh, and the rest of the episode doesn't. Uh, I feel like at this point, everyone else is enjoying the show more than I am. But I'm also kind of like, how? <laughs> like... For example, at the end of the last episode, when Dot wakes up at the hospital, she's told, your husband is here. And she's relieved, like, oh, thank God, Wayne is here. The big reveal, it's Roy, and he's finally caught her to the surprise of no one, right? Like, that shocked all of you precisely 0.00%, right? Like, you didn't think that that was actually Wayne, right? And here's the thing. I'm not holding that specific thing against the show. You want to land at a place where Roy is scooping up Dot from the hospital? That's a serviceable way of getting there. I don't even think they tried to like really trick us, like really, like I don't think they sp really felt us, really meant for us to believe that it was Wayne. It's just that these sorts of things keep happening that just take me out of the episode a little bit. I could write off once, but I didn't go, oh shit, it's Roy. I went, well, obviously that's gonna be Roy. So it's like, <laughs> so it's like again, I'm not sitting here being uh, enveloped in, in, in this story that you're telling, I'm just sitting here like, well, this is obviously going to be Roy. Like, I can't, I can't even, like, just chill and watch it because so much shit keeps happening that, that makes me go back into my mind and be like, all right, well, I see what you're doing here. And then in this episode, when Roy is checking Dot out of the, hop uh, out of the hospital, an otherwise really great scene is kind of ruined, at, at least for me, by having to turn off my brain and accept the ridiculously convenient presence of Whit Farr at this hospital at that time. Like, the scene is great. Like, with him and Dot having the, like, if you really need help, I can get you out of here and keep you safe. Conversation right in front of Roy. All three actors are great in this scene. Lamorne Morris, that's, that's right, right? He's been really good on this season. Like, I, 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 I almost wish we had gotten him more, but it's kind of like, when he shows up, I'm, I'm glad, because I'm like, this is, every time he shows up, I'm satisfied with what I see. Whereas a lot of the other times, like, there's whole, there's so many other things that happen that, like, bother me that I'm just like, oh, that didn't really work. But every time he shows up, his character, Lamorne, like, I'm always, like, I always think the Whitfire scenes are great. I just wish that specific scene with him and Roy and, and, and Dot didn't start with me going, how the fuck is Whit here? Like, that's really convenient. Like, I'd like, like... Again, it took me out of the episode. He's checking her out of the hospital. Why the fuck did Whit Farr just walk into the fucking lobby? I'm like, this, what is this? Like, that's too convenient. Anyway, Roy takes Dot back to his ranch, and he chains her up in a small barn. Uh, the phrase, uh, hurt people, hurt people, it rings true when Roy's current wife slaps Dot for mouthing off, and it's just like, wow, you 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 learned your lesson, huh? You, you learned how to smack people <laughs> very well from your husband. Uh, Dot threatens to kill Roy, which felt more like foreshadowing than a threat. And Dot later uses what I think was a paperclip 
uh, that she stole from the hospital to remove one of the posts from her bed and to use that as a weapon. Uh, Gator shows up and uh, she doesn't do anything, but she tells him that she saw Linda and that Linda was going to come back for him, but Roy would have killed her. She then pours salt on the wound and saying that he was going to be named Roy, Gator was, but as soon as Roy saw him, he knew that Gator was going to be a little bitch and <laughs> would rather just have his name die out, which is a wild <laughs> thing to say and a wild thought to have. Uh, but even wilder is when you remember that the shit with Linda didn't actually happen. <laughs> so, uh, but that makes Gator's reaction a bit more justifiable. Like, if Linda's actually dead and Roy suggests that later in the episode, he says something like, I'll bury you right next to Linda or something to, something to that effect, maybe Gator knows this and sees Dot's words as like a cruel way of fucking with him. So, I, I, can, I, can, I can accept that. Uh, as Gator leaves, a head pops up in the back of his car in the back seat. And at first I thought it was Dot. And I was like, I know she unchanged herself. But how does she beat him out of the barn and into the back of his car when he left the barn first? <laughs> like, I was, like, that was going to be... Like, that was going to be... That was going to result in another one of my rants. Like, I was going to come on here and rip this episode apart if they were going to expect me to believe that. But no, you know, it looked like it was actually Munch who was uh, uh, in the back seat of that car and will hopefully be filling a hole very shortly. Uh, another important portion of this episode is Roy's debate. Uh, the episode opens with Danish filing paperwork to change the names of three men to all have the same name. We don't know what that name is at the time. But as Roy shows up for his share of debate, the three men from the opening scene, they walk up on stage and we learn that their names are also now Roy Tillman and that they'll be participating in the debate. And then they proceed to very literally just mock him. And again, took me out of the episode. It's a funny gag, like, I guess, but the implausibility of it was just too much for me. Like, it's probably more plausible in a small town in North Dakota, but nevertheless, I was forced to sit there and not think about the fact that I can't change my name to Nikki Haley and walk on the fucking Republican debate stage. Like, that just it doesn't work that way. <laughs> so I'm like, yes, obviously Nikki Haley's running for president, I get it, but we shouldn't have to sit here and rationalize how or if some shit is possible. Like, we should just be enjoying the episode and not going, that feels implausible. Like, again, that completely took me out of the sea, though. Like, oh, th like you could do that? Like, I just take, I could change my name to Joe Biden and now I'm president? Like, <laughs> like I mean, obviously, I'm, 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 this isn't like a one-to-one -one compar comparison, but you get the point. Like, you can't just change your name and now they're Roy Tillman and now they're on the debate stage. Uh, again, maybe you can do it in, a, in North Dakota in, you know, a small town hall or whatever, but I shouldn't have to sit here and be like, what the fuck is this? And hey, maybe you guys didn't have a problem with that at all. And, and that's fine. But that fucked up the entire scene for me because that was so implausible that I struggled to even understand what was happening. Like, I couldn't just sit there and watch. I was forced to, to, to pull myself out of the episode and try to make sense out of what I was seeing. I'm like, why are there three guys dressed like Roy and they're mocking him? Like, what is it? Like, it didn't even make sense because it's so implausible that someone could just change their name and now they're in the debate. To change their name to somebody who's... Uh, running for office and now they are all now also there like it, it's so ridiculous that like i didn't even understand what was happening until later obviously slapping the moderator i thought that was pretty shocking though and all of this leads to the climax of the episode in which danish lays out to roy that he is now truly fucked but lorraine can save him if he just hands over dot to which roy replies with gunfire <laughs> uh -huh. danish who had earlier thought to call lorraine but hesitated and tried to handle the shit himself He's now dead, but uh, Dot sees his body getting dumped, and that made me wonder if that's going to come back around, that body dumping location. Like, do they have multiple bodies buried there? And Dot now knows the location, so if once all of this is over, they can prosecute Roy and be like, oh, well, Dot can be like, all the bodies are underneath that thing, you know, whatever. Uh, but we'll see. After the debate incident, Roy returns home, and his wife gasses him up about how this is somehow Dot's fault that the, uh, <laughs> that the debate went the wrong way. And there's a really great, it's a long shot, though, of Roy walking to the barn where Dot's tied up. And, and in this long shot, as he gets closer, he's, look, he's looking increasingly furious, almost like he's, like, imagine, like, a snowball rolling downhill. And as it gains more snow, it's getting bigger and bigger. As he's walking toward this barn, it feels like he's making himself angrier and angrier and angrier, which I can relate to, um... And all the while, it's playing this haunting rendition of, of Britney Spears' Toxic. I, I, I thought this was a really great shot. And these are the kind of moments, that like that shot that I'm here for on Fargo and that I expect out of Fargo. 
not three guys dressed like cowboys on the debate stage. Like that kind of shit. That other great shot of him running out of the barn, I think it was episode two, the shot that I loved in episode one with Wit hiding behind the car. Like high tension, high drama, well shot, just doing the basics right. Not trying to do all this extracurricular shit and then now you're in a world where things aren't making sense. You're setting expectations of a Home Alone scene and then kicking it down the road and then it barely lives up to it. We don't even get to see the fucking bat. I'm still the bat with the fucking... Uh, nails coming out of it. Like, like, obviously, I'm still upset about that. It's like they tried to do too much instead of doing the basics at the highest level. And that's what I expect out of this show is doing the basics, giving me some, some suspense, maybe even a little bit of surrealism at the highest level. Not three guys dressed like cowboys on the base stage. And Roy and Dot go at it with Roy seemingly trying to destroy Dot with the very chain that she's tied to the floor with. Like, he's swinging that thing, and that chain has weight. Like, if it hits her, it's the death. Like, that thing, or broken arm, or whatever. Like, this, that thing's massive. And there's a really exciting scene that ends uh, just short of Dot being killed, with Roy being informed of Danish's arrival. And we all know how that played out. I just talked about it. Uh, the final plot thread of this episode followed Indira, who got confirmation of what I suspected in the previous video, that her husband was uh, cheating. I like the empowerment, though, that we saw from Indira in this scene. Uh, she's finally had enough of him, and she's so goddamn strong that she doesn't even stand there and, like, weep or mourn uh, her marriage. She got shit to do. She just changes into her work clothes while the woman her husband was cheating with is right next to her also getting dressed after just having been caught. And it's like, that's such a, like, I don't have time to sit here and, and, and bullshit with you. I got work to do. You, you and her can hang out, whatever. I got work to do. Fuck both of y'all. I'm out. And then she goes outside to see her car getting repo, and that seemed to upset her more than finding out about her husband, which tracks with what we've seen between Indira and the husband. So all that really good stuff. Um, after Wit tells her what happened at the hospital with Roy and Dot, she goes to tell Lorraine, who tells her, uh, Indira, that she's starting her new job running Lorraine's security detail, a job that was offered at the end of the last episode, but I didn't feel the need to mention because I knew I was going to mention it in this video. Uh, it looks like we'll be seeing a lot of fireworks in the penultimate episode with Lorraine and Indira on their way to save an already beaten Dot and to undoubtedly learn uh, about a now dead Danish. Uh, while I have been a bit down on the show, I am excited for these final two episodes. I just don't think this season is doing anything special. Like I, I've already said it, I'm not going to continue to hammer it home. It feels like it's trying to restore the show to season one and season two prominence, but it just feels like a lesser version of those two seasons. So, on that note, I'm off to watch episode 9 right now. Until then, peace.